We're going to discuss a topic that has given me immeasurable peace and joy, and that is choosing yourself. Before I go into this topic, I'd like to chat about some things that have been going on in my world and the world around me. And before we begin, a reminder to follow me and get notifications when I post new episodes. If you want to chat directly with me, hit me up at Charlie's Toolbox on IG, Twitter, and TikTok. So let's begin. So now it is time to talk about me, a topic that I absolutely love. You guys know I've been off for a month and I just want to let you all know that I love leisure. I love leisure. There's nothing better than doing absolutely nothing or getting up when I want to or doing something whenever I feel like it. And I think for the next quarters of my life, I want to make my objective uh, to be to to find ways to make more time for leisure. I want to be present. You know, I want to continue working on my anxiety so I don't have to panic or dread while I'm relaxing. And I know where I picked that up from. I picked that up in school uh, when I first got my first master's degree. I was when I left, my nerves were shocked. And I still had that kind of, do I have a project, something coming up? Um, and I still folk, I still worked on task-based projects. So I was always kind of nervous or anxious about something, a deadline being missed. I also want to focus on commitment and consistency. As you can see with this podcast, I've been on and off. And a lot of that is due to school and work and just being busy and exhausted, exhausting. But I really am going to commit to pushing out new episodes every single week because I do have a lot to say. I have episodes are, are that are already on deck. And I think if I just commit a bit more, this can be something bigger than what I envision it. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to allow my emotions to dictate everything. And I realize that that does not help me in the long term with a lot of my goals and my mission and my vision. So I will have to build that muscle up, build it stronger. You know, I have a commitment, you know, I, I am able to commit and I am able to be consistent, but I think it should be stronger so that I can build up Charlie's Toolbox into the brand, into the podcast that I know it can be because I really, really, really desire to reach women. I want us to be powerful. I want us to be strong. I want us to be unwavering and I want us to not give a fuck about what other people got going on or should I impress this guy or should I do this so that I can be chose. I just want you guys to be firm, rooted And I feel like I have a lot of knowledge and tips on how to be firm and rooted. So that's something that I want to do. And I hope I get the chance. Well, not hope. I know I'm going to do that. So let's get into the next topic. And this is about the world. The other day I read a piece and this was like maybe a week or two ago, I read a piece titled Confessions of a Perpetually Single Woman by Morgan Parker. And she wrote about her dating experience and how deflating it could be. And a passage that caught my eye was in the beginning of the piece. She states, one thing about being unhappily single in your 30s, besides the very real biological and social pressure to reproduce, is everybody think there must be a reason why a reason that you must be somewhat content with or aware of if you're taking no steps to improve your situation. As long as a person is unhappily single, there must be something wrong. You must need help. And um, if you this this article is on L, I do recommend reading it. Um, I just think it, it provides a different perspective than what I'm used to. But it made me explore some questions I had while reading this piece. The first question was, one, why do we equate being single as a personal failure? Two, why is this type of vulnerability the only thing black women discuss when talking about dating and being single? And three, why am I uncomfortable with someone 
being unhappily single. It does rev me up a little bit. Um, I just don't get it. And I, 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 and I know that's a little bit, that's not being compassionate, but it does bother me when I hear this. So I'm going to kind of discuss some of the thoughts that came up with these questions and just bear with me. So when we equate being single as a personal failure, we overlook a lot of facts. And the biggest fact being that there are people with problems who are in relationships and they are in relationships or they're always partnered. So it can't be a personal failure. You know, we've heard and met the narcissist, the abuser, the jealous type, the love bomber, or the partner who requires you to dim your light in order for them to exist. And we've seen them in partnerships. Sometimes we've seen them in lifelong partnerships and God bless the partner who they're with. Yet we still hold on to the thought that they have something special that we do not have that they have something likable that causes their partners to overlook their chaos, drama, or mental health issues and choose them. And that's not true. Love and romance are often a thing of luck and willingness. And of course, there are structures in society that make some of us luckier than others. But for the most part, it is luck and a willingness to commit. And that is often all it is. So you guys have to quit telling yourself that you aren't feminine enough, you aren't submissive enough or pleasant enough. Of course, we can improve to reach goals like having a larger network, career opportunities, things that are actually beneficial to our life. But being feminine and being submissive is not something that is actually benefit. Beneficial, completely changing your essence, masking or creating a facade for a partner is an option that is very unnecessary. It's super harmful. And if you truly analyze partner people, you will see that they have huge problems. A lot of them have huge personality problems, but they are partnered. So it's not a you problem. It's not that there's something wrong with you or you're doing, you're not feminine enough. You're not submissive enough. You're not pleasant enough. You're not this, you're not that. It really is luck and a willingness to commit. And that's all it is. And when I think about the black women and public vulnerability, I hate that it always revolves around dating and being single or being undesirable or it's always framed as a personal failure. Um, It's always woe is me. And it's sometimes I realize that they discuss, you know, they discuss the lack of qualified candidates, which I understand that. And I get the analysis and structural, individual, personal, interpersonal, all those, all those analysis. I get it. But I don't like this type of public vulnerability. And for some reason, and the reason why I don't like this type of vulnerability is because it seems to be the only space that black women occupy when we are writing about our dating experiences or just our personal, our love life. And I understand that this is a truth. I get it. But is this the dominant truth? Is this the only truth that we have? Are there other aspects to this? Are there other point of views, perspectives? Are there happily single black women? We never get to hear from them. We always hear about how black women are undesirable. They're always single, always alone, and we're miserable about it. And I am so tired of hearing that story, that plot line, that narrative, that op-ed, I don't like hearing it because it seems to be the only space that we are dominant, dominant and prevalent. And, you know, I want to be clear. I was indoctrinated to seek out romantic relationships. I am under the same training that you guys, but the only thing, the only thing that I say that I may differ from is that I was not necessarily taught that being single was a personal problem or failure. Um, 
the people, the women in my family, they were happily single. Uh, being single, it didn't mean anything to them. It didn't mean anything to me. It indicated nothing about me. It was a state of being. It could be joyful. It could bring peace. It could bring peace. It could bring great sex and fun dates. It could also bring sadness and melancholy. It could allow you the true freedom to do what you truly wanted, but perpetually unhappy it was not. Which is why I struggle with compassion and empathy for those who see singledom as a punishment, as painful, as sad, as unfulfilling. It's also why, once again, I have to (laughs) reiterate that I hate these articles of public vulnerability like this one. Because I do not, I fundamentally do not believe that singleness is a prison. I understand singleness as... Sometimes when I think about it, I think about it as a bird that is stretching their wings as far as possible. There is no limit. No one has contours for you. They are not asking you to compromise or put you in any box and asking you to stay there. You can do and be whoever you want at any time. And I don't know. And this is something that I, I've been thinking about and digging within. I don't know if my feelings on this is something I should work on or not, you know, but I get annoyed with the woes of unhappily single women. You know, I feel like their cries are far more heard than we like to believe or accept. We know these stories. We know these stories more than happily single people. There are books about unhappily single. There are movies for them. There are columns that we read. There are support groups, YouTube videos, Twitter threads, and TikTok videos to soothe the cries of women who are unhappily single. And everyone is like, well, we need someone to talk about this. We need someone to claim this truth. But I feel like no one communes more. No one speaks more. No one writes the rom-coms the romance movies, more than unhappily single people. And this is just my personal opinion. I don't want to read this anymore. I want the next step. The vulnerability of a woman who decided to live on her own accord. I want to know about that person. What does she have to say once she takes off the brave mask and talks about the ups and downs? Or the time she wishes there were more support for her decision. Where is she at? Who is approaching her for a story? Where is her movie, column, and TikTok video? When I see women allowing their singleness to debilitate them, and I think that's the problem I have, is the fact that you are debilitated by this. It feels like a loss to our world. And I mourn it, but I also roll my eyes at it because you've been given a life that is incredibly short. In the grand scheme of things, it is incredibly short. And you are painting all of your experiences as empty because you have not experienced romantic love yet. And I know it is a big part of being an adult. It is a big part of your experience. I do know that. But should that color every experience you have with emptiness, sadness, melancholy? Can you allow the grief of being single to just occupy a specific space and then allow the rest of your life to be filled with so much color? Is that a possibility or must you be debilitated by this lack of romance? So, you know, that's something that I've been thinking about. That's something to think about. Um, I have no resolve. I have no point. I just, it's just something that has always been in the back of my mind, a conversation that I always want to have. And I thought this article was a great jumping off point because it points to something that bothers me. And I try to have compassion for it. And maybe, you know, that's something that I have to work on. But it's very hard for me to have compassion about it because I feel like you guys are just too electric, too colorful, too beautiful 
to allow this to damper every so every single experience that you have. So let's get into the song of the week. Uh, my song of the week. I've been um, using music to create, to dance, of course, to just set the mood for my day. And I've been listening to some old Nigerian music. Uh, this one song I love so much. It's called "Happy Survival" by Eddie Okwedi. You know, and it's O K W E D Y or Okwedi. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, it's it's a really really great song. I I was bopping to it. Um, I was listening to the song. I was just grooving with it. It feels good. I know it has a message. Um, I'll try to look up the lyrics, but no one wrote about the lyrics, but I know it has a message. <laughs> I know it has a message and I am for that message. Whatever that message is, I am for it. Um, and I know he got something to say. So give it a listen. Let me know what you think. Um, by the way, when it comes to music, my taste is all over the place. One way, one week you're going to get raging music. The other day you're going to get some bossa nova. You're going to get some indie. You're going to get some house. I use all genres for inspiration to kind of curate my mood. So uh, when I recommend songs, just know that you're going to get a mixed bag. Um, so I'm going to talk about the topic of the week. And it's about choosing yourself, which is my, I really love talking about choosing yourself because it is the single most decision. It's the best decision I have ever made for myself. And it's the single decision that has uh, brought me enormous peace. So when I think, you know, and I think, and I think this, the reason why I said choosing your, I wrote about choosing yourself is because it was, in a way, a response to the chronically unhappily single article that we just discussed. Uh, I just felt like there should be something to counter that and to either counter or to like add to that conversation, not counter, add, add to that conversation. So I think choosing yourself has to be seen from a different light, even when it is not your choice. You know, even when you just don't, there's not eligible partners and you just, you decided to be with yourself because you just don't see any opportunities out there. It has to be seen, seen in a different light. You want love and that is okay, but are you going to be floating on just kind of barely in life until you choose, until love chooses you back? Is your life while single in black and white? Until romantic love comes and make you have a colorful life. That is what we must discuss. Women disconnecting from life until they receive love. Choosing you is not a prison or a punishment. Choosing you can be a revolutionary act that women in your family, the older women in your family, they wish they had. They wish they had, but they could not due to our societal structures. For example, growing up, I had the opportunity to bond with my grandmothers. I love my grandma, my grandmothers. Um, Granny, rest in peace. Grandma, I love you. We would sit down. And, and also, I would recommend if you, you know, if your grandmothers are alive, I would recommend like taking a week and just to spend time with them. You'll be surprised at what you learn. So we'd sit down or lay down and talk for hours. And I'd ask them questions about themselves and their lives. And they tell me about their youth. And we look back and realize how restrictive their life was because their parents were either not educated or their parents were parented from a place of survival. And that's all they knew. And they also live in a society that treated black people and women as second class citizens. So they were forced to choose others, people who had the safety, who had the finances, the support to survive. They had to choose them to survive. They had to choose them for their parents or their family's approval. And they had to choose them for because of society's approval. In order to get by, they had to choose these partners. And in a way, there was no choice in this decision. So when they see me and they see the opportunities 
that they weren't given. They see the ease that I have. They see the freedom that I have to do exactly what I want with no children needing food or a home. They get immense joy. When they see me choosing what I want to do without consulting a partner or going after my heart's desires or taking care of myself with my own money and my own job, the job that I like, they get immense pleasure, immense joy. And they get it because that was something that was not offered to them. So much of this modern world was at one time a privilege for our grandmothers and great-grandmothers. So I don't get the need or want to use, like I don't understand that you have all of these freedoms that your, and this is two generations, your grandmother did not have, and you use these choices to be sad and deflated. I don't get that. I feel like in a way it is almost disrespect to your your people. Like, do you do you realize if they had the opportunity to get the education, to get the choices, the money, the career that they have to be free, how much how many of them would have chosen that? And yet you have it and are sad about it. Choosing you can also be a personal choice that is brave. The bravery is because everything in our society tells us and shows us that you are not worthy unless you are partnered or in service to others. So when you choose not to be a maid, a caretaker, therapist, sex object or audience member, people do not know where to place you. So instead of understanding that you are a human being with your own wants and needs, they interpret you as a person with deep flaws. And that is why you haven't been chosen as a maid, caretaker, therapist, etc. to men. When you're interpreted as that, you have to be brave. You have to stand firm. And that doesn't always mean you have to defend yourself or your choices. Sometimes it is smiling in someone's face and walking away when they tell you that you are the problem. It means hearing people tell you what you should do to get a man and ignoring it. That's bravery. It means that you have to decide against just enough or decide to not fall into mediocrity. That is a personal choice that you have to make. And it will be annoying have to ch- having to choose this or having to stand in it when someone is constantly persecuting your choice. But that is what you have to do. That personal choice is brave. That is something that you will have to stick to if you want the life that is dictated by you, where you have freedom. Of course, you can choose partners that creates enough space for that freedom. But if you don't have that option, choose you or always choose you. Finally, you must choose yourself even when you don't want to be single. You know, sometimes we are circumstantially single, meaning we broke up with someone because of a deep flaws they had or someone broke up with us and we are circumstantially single. And when you are circumstantially single, choosing yourself is extremely important because this is the time where you are often detached from life. This is the time where you are yearning to choose others. You want it so bad. You want to give to them. You want to be with someone, hold hands, go to the movies. Or sometimes, you know, you had these relationships that died and you haven't mourned properly. You have to, you know, you have to seek joy when you are angry about being perpetually single or in a situationship or recently broken up. Of course, you can mourn. You can be sad about these things. You can be sad. Up. I'm not saying you don't have to be sad about being single. You could be sad about single being single. 
but be sad for a second and choose to live again. Choose to give it up and ask yourself, what do I want to do today? Ask yourself, do I need energy from my friends, nature, work, a hobby? What do you need to feel good? And if you don't know what you need to feel good, try everything and find out. You try everything and you cross your list off because you have the time, you have the freedom, you have the money to do these things. These things that aren't afforded for aren't afforded to everyone. For me, choosing myself is a little bit of political and personal. I choose me because of my grannies to make them proud that I'm using this freedom as much as I can. I also choose myself because it feels better than choosing others. When I tried to choose others, I suffered. I tried to figure out what was going on and what should I do to change me so that this situation won't arise again. It didn't work. It didn't work. I was betraying myself. I was crying. I was depressed. I was angry because I was misunderstood. I was used, ignored, and diminished when I chose others, when I put them at the forefront of my decisions. But when I chose myself... And I operated from that space that everybody is in service of me. It was freeing. It was really freeing. I felt light. I laughed more than I could even count. I cried from tears of joy. I experienced the moment. I was compassionate. I gave love. And I gave love. It didn't have to be romantic love. I gave love to everybody. And I was loved. I chose me because it felt, it feels good. I use all those freedom freedoms. I use them. You have to think about all of the reasons you should choose yourself and remind yourself of it every time you feel like you are about to choose something mediocre or you're about to choose something not beneficial to you or you're about to choose something because you're bored or you got to choose something because they're there. You're about to choose something because they're good on per- on paper, but you don't really know who they are as a person. You've got to remind yourself of this personal and political reason why you have to choose you. Because when you choose others, it costs a lot. It costs a lot. It costs a lot. It costs your self-esteem, your boundaries, your mind, because people will make you feel like you're crazy. Your body, your work, your career, your joy, your passion, your vision, your mission, your mission. All those things can be impacted when you choose others. My last thought on choosing yourself is this. Being by yourself is not a precursor to happiness. So you know how like. The way that I think that people think life is for women is um, not happy being single, happy being in a relationship. Like, I think that they think it's separated in two phases. The unhappy pre-baby maker and the happy baby maid. Being single, you don't have to be sad and alone. You really don't. There are other options. There are other options. You can be happy and single. You can be joyous and single. And furthermore, when you delay your life for men, so you you wait on someone to rescue you, you wait on a man to date you so you could change your lifestyle, your habits. When you do these things, you are deciding not to live your life. You are deciding that your life starts and ends with this person. And that is not a wish. That type of thinking isn't a wish that I will wish on my worst enemy. Singleness and even solitude are valid happiness. And women aren't lying when they say they're happy when single. So stop interrogating them. And acting as though they are not. And on that note, 
I ask you guys to choose yourself truly. It is the best gift that you can give yourself. For show notes, be sure to check out charliestoolbox.com. Follow Charlie on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Charlie's Toolbox. Thanks again for listening to Charlie's Toolbox.